What's up guys, JP here. Today I want to talk to you about a really important topic, one that I've been thinking about quite a lot recently, and that is about identity. Um, and what I mean when I refer to identity is I refer to the criteria with which you place on yourself that puts you into a category, right? It's the categories that we put on ourselves uh, uh, and the identity that we want to be recognized under. And the reason that I think this is a really important topic is because the identity that we set for ourselves um, dictates a lot of our behavior because we want to be recognized under, as being under a certain social group. And we take pride in filling an identity. So whether that be your nationality or your ethnicity or the activities that you do or the religion that you follow, all these types of things help form your identity and how you identify is important to help create a sense of belonging for you, to help you create a sense of uh, comfort amongst other people that also fall under that, that banner or that category or that identity that you've set up. So when I'm talking about identity, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I'm referring to how you see yourself and the, the social construct that you put under yourself. And again, that this is important because it's going to dictate a lot of our behavior. For example, if you identify under a certain social group, certain banner, you behave to fulfill the beliefs you have about how that group behaves or the, that stereotype uh, behaves because you want to feel like you are part of that group. You want to feel like you uh, fall under that, that banner and that you are similar. You are similar to the people that are in that banner. And again, this is not a bad thing. This is definitely a good thing because we want to feel a sense of belonging. And it helps us feel safe. It helps us feel like we are part of something bigger. Really good example uh, of a time where I felt this sense of belonging and this sense of comfort was when I was traveling through Europe in 2012. Um, for those that know, I'm a Catholic, I'm a practicing Catholic, and I was traveling through Europe with my friends and we had a free Sunday, my friends were still asleep and I got up early and I went to church. And I went to a church in Spain and I'm obviously not Spanish and I don't speak Spanish. And the whole mass was in Spanish. And although I didn't understand what was going on, I felt a really big, overwhelming sense of comfort and belonging because I'm a Catholic and I was in this building with other Catholics and I recognized the pattern of the mass and the ceremony and things kind of, you know, there was a lot of similarities obviously to an English mass. I mean, it's exactly the same thing, just in a different language. So I felt like this really big sense of comfort and, and belonging. So being clear with your identity is actually quite important because you want to, you should know who you are and what groups you want to fall under, uh, fall under. There are many ways that we set our identity. So like I said, things like religion, things like uh, obviously your ethnicity, where you were born, your area. A lot of people take pride in their country. For example, you know, you see big sporting festivals. People cheer for uh, athletes that are of the same identity as them. A uh, really good example is the Australian Opens right now, right, is on right now in Melbourne, where I'm from. And Australians support the Australian tennis players for no other reason other than the fact that they're Australian. They fall under the same identity banner as yourself. Uh, you know, going on from that example, Kim Kleisters is a tennis player, I think she was Belgian, and she was engaged to an Australian tennis player. So the Australian community supported her when she was competing in tennis, even though she was Belgian. But there was this sense of belonging, this sense of togetherness, like we are the same people, so we identify under that banner and we are supportive of those people. Where this kind of ties into in powerlifting is obviously how people identify themselves as powerlifters. Right? I'm a powerlifter, and as a powerlifter, I want to fall under these certain criteria, these banners, these social constructs that make me a powerlifter, that make me the same as these other people who I don't know, but I want to be associated with. I want to know those people. I'm not saying that this is a bad thing at all. Like this is, um, there's no negative connotation associated with what I'm talking about. But it's just interesting how people, how lifters want to belong and want to call themselves a power lifter. You know, you buy all the latest knee sleeves, you buy the elbow sleeves, you buy the wrist wraps, you buy the slingshot, you know, you buy the Mark Bell slingshot. Mark Bell is a legend. You post memes up, you post your training on social media, on Instagram. Oh, this water's coming in real close. Because you want to identify under this banner of power lifter. It's all well and good. And this is applicable to all types of identity. But what happens when you start to lose that identity? What happens when things change? What happens when you don't like powerlifting anymore? Right, you've devoted so much time, so much effort, so much love. You know, you've 
ridiculed other hobbies. You know, do you even lift, bro? Ah, bodybuilders are losers. You're so vain. Crossfitters, you know, I don't know. Powerlifters make jokes about crossfitters for some reason. What happens when you don't like powerlifting anymore? What happens when you want to start doing crossfit? What happens when you start wanting to do more bodybuilding? Who do you become then? You know, you start to lose this identity. And some people have this really big fear and anxiety about losing their identity as a powerlifter or, or any other social construct or any other identity marker. And I want to kind of share with you the fact that that's not a big deal. Like it's not a problem to change your identity. Your identity is something that's very dynamic. It's not a static thing. You don't grow up and say, this is my identity, this is who I am. There is no shame in stopping and changing and doing other things, all right? You might want to pick up surfing, for example, in your mid thirties, go do it. It's very, it can be very easy to say, well, I'm not a surfer. I don't know how to surf. So what, learn, become a surfer. And even then you don't have to fall under that identity. You don't need to start fulfilling that, that those markers and the criteria. Maybe you just want to start surfing. Maybe you just like doing it. But you don't need to call yourself a surfer. You don't need to start reading surfing books and magazines and follow surfing Instagram pages to call yourself a surfer. You could just be a guy that likes surfing. You could just be a guy that likes doing other things or a girl that likes doing other things. You don't have to fulfill those criteria. So I guess uh, to safeguard yourself from these feelings, there's a couple of ways to go about doing it. The first thing is to have multiple identity markers across many domains of your life. So don't get so caught up with describing yourself, with categorizing yourself. You don't have to fall under a category. You don't have to be a powerlifter. You can just be a guy that likes going to the gym. You can be a father or a daughter or a son or a, you can be a scientist or you can be a reader or you can be a chess player or you can be a surfer or you can be a, a sports lover or you can be anything. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. So having many identities is important and not bogging yourself down to one identity. I know this is ironic coming from me because powerlifting is my identity. A lot of you that follow me only follow me because of my powerlifting content. But the fact of the matter is that I've got many other identities. I do many other things. I like hang hanging out with my friends. I've got many other hobbies. I like playing other games and other sports and I'm involved in a whole bunch of ways in my community and I do a whole range of things. Yes, I love powerlifting. I, I compete in powerlifting. I coach powerlifting. I own a powerlifting gym. I am powerlifting. And I want that identity. I want people to recognize me as JP is the powerlifting guy. You want to learn powerlifting? Go to JP. He knows what he's talking about. I want that identity. But I'm also aware of the fact that if that happens to change in the future, if one day I want to start taking on other hobbies and I don't want to be seen as a powerlifter, that option is there for me. I can do that. And I'm not afraid of that. I'm not afraid of changing who I am. And, the, and you know, I'm not f afraid of backlash or what other people will say or that type of thing. There's no shame in all that. So that's just something I want to share with you. Um, I don't know if there's a real objective or point to all this, more so the fact that who you are is something that's dynamic. It's not static. It changes all the time based on the people you're around, the people you talk to, the places you go, the things you do, the social groups you interact with, the hobbies you undertake. That's all dynamic. That can all change and there's nothing wrong with that. And that it is worthwhile considering who you are and who you want to be perceived as, who you self-identify as, but also how other people identify you and what behaviors you end up taking on to fulfill those roles. I mean, you wanna call yourself a surfer, so you start reading surfing magazines, even though you don't like reading those magazines, you find the magazines boring, you just like doing the surf, but maybe you feel like you have to read the magazines in order to fill the criteria, which is completely nonsensical when you hear it, but maybe you're doing that subconsciously, you know? So, I don't know, maybe just think about the things that you're doing and understand that other, other hobbies that you're undertaking or the you know, other things in your life that you're doing, are you only doing that to fulfill the stereotype that you've set up for yourself under the identity with which you're labeling yourself? Or do you actually enjoy, do you actually like doing those things? I know it's a bit of a really abstract topic, but I hope you've gathered some use out of that. If you found it interesting, it's a little bit random. And uh, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section below if you want to uh, share with me your thoughts or experiences about this. That'd be really cool. I'd love to respond to those and hear what you guys have to say. Uh, if you'd like to add to this discussion, yeah, please do so in the comment section. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube video, I mean, to the YouTube channel. Yeah, cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Recording. us in a social way.
I guess, with our own thoughts and beliefs. Fuck. Ah, oh, my feet hurt. Ow. Okay, I'm gonna start again.